We're going to take a quick break and we're going to go to um, Community Spotlight. We're going to learn a little bit more about what is happening in the community and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll discuss call to actions. Oregon Zoo. We're talking to Dr. David Shepherdson, the Deputy Conservation Division Manager. We're talking about the butterfly program and right now behind us we're doing some harvesting. Um, can you talk a little bit about what they're doing here? The volunteers and interns here are collecting food for the Oregon Silver Spot butterfly larvae which are growing in the lab right now and which we're going to be releasing over the next period of the next month. They're, right now they're at their most voracious phase so they're eating a lot so we have to spend a lot of time cutting leaves for these Caterpillars. Why is it that we are concerned about these butterflies existing? Why do we care that they're here? Well, I, I think there are lots of different reasons. I mean, one is because people love butterflies, and that's a valid reason all in, all in of itself, and they're, they're a unique species that, that might disappear. Uh, they do have a role as pollinators. Uh, they're not the only pollinator, but they are a significant pollinator in the areas that they live. But I think maybe the most important thing to understand with the butterflies is that um, Butterflies are very sensitive indicators of a whole habitat, so it's not just the species. So if you can restore the habitat to bring the butterflies back, um, you can be fairly sure that you've restored a lot of health to that habitat and all the other species, some of which may not even be known to science, but they're all benefited by this habitat restoration. So that indicator species role, I think, is important. And then you can ask, why do we want the habitat? Well, there's also reasons why, might, why we want the habitat other than just um, liking it. But ultimately, they, most of them provide us with something. You know, we get our clean water, we get our clean air, uh, we get a lot of services from the environment and we have to be pretty careful at this point in time when we're, where we're, where we're de destroying so many habitats that we don't actually destroy the things that we need. The caterpillars will only eat one plant, the host plant, and that's the Pacific Coast Violet. But the numbers of the Pacific Coast Violet are declining along the coast because the Pacific Coast Violet grows on coastal prairie. Okay. And coastal prairie is a very scarce commodity now. It used to be fairly common. The habitat restoration involves bringing back those coastal prairies and increasing the frequency thereby of the, um, of the violets that the, the caterpillars eat, but also all the other components of that habitat. Here we are back at the lab. This is Mary Jo Anderson. She's the head keeper of butterflies here at the Oregon Zoo. We've just collected some leaves from the violets and it's lunchtime. We've got the it's food. Definitely lunchtime. This is a special lab that we have set up just to raise thousands and thousands of caterpillars for release back into the wild. And they look like they're hungry. They're really hungry. Uh, the, the children's story, Hungry Hungry Caterpillar, is exactly right. It takes thousands of thousands of leaves to feed these caterpillars. And a whole army of interns to, to feed them, I understand. Exactly. We have high school and college students and even adult interns that all help us with raising these animals. Well, can you tell us the process that goes through? How do they get here? I mean, here they are. We had hundreds in here, but exactly. where did they come from? So they come from their moms, and we the the females, the adult females, are collected in the field every fall. Um, there, the field biologists can tell out in the field if it's a male or a female. So they come to us. We share the project also with the Woodland Park Zoo up in Seattle. So we get ten moms, and they get ten moms and it's, uh, we collect their eggs, we turn up the heat and put them in paper bags and they lay eggs on paper towel strips so we count every single egg right. and when those eggs hatch they're teeny tiny little caterpillars they're one millimeter and in the wild they would eat their eggshell and crawl off to sleep. The life cycle is actually it's almost a year long but butterflies are only butterflies for a few weeks. Exactly, so we always think about butterflies and we forget about the caterpillars and really for both the species that we take care of the caterpillar lives for most of the whole year and they live actually while they're sleeping for most more of the year than when they're active and when they're pupating and when they're butterflies or when they're eggs. How long do they stay in this form, in the caterpillar form? We've woken them up um, in early June and now it's uh, late July so they've been awake about eight weeks and they're starting to pupate. So here's a guy who pupated this morning and his old exoskeleton is just up there, his old molt and they're hanging from their tail. You can actually see where, where the wings are going to be of the butterfly. And the head is down, the antennas and, and eyes are down on the bottom there. 
once they, they're pupated and they're ready to go out into yeah. the field, what do we do then? All right, so we have a, we've, we've developed a very extensive process for getting them out to the field successfully. 3140. We make these little the paper whole, towel um, pockets and um, each and every pupa gets a number that identifies who its mother was, the date it pupated, and then its individual house ID. And then we stick those little pupa down in those little pockets. These are mounted up in the, out in the field by the, the field biologists inside these buckets. And these are just clam buckets that we get clams in for our sea otters. So we just reuse what we, what, what's around us. We're really good at that. And we cut the little doorways in them. This bucket is then um, put out in the field in a special release cage. So it has netting to keep out predators and staked into the ground. And then the field biologists go out every day to release the butterflies that have emerged or eclosed as butterflies from the pupa. So. Why are these particular butterflies important? Like, why should we care if they're threatened or not? Butterflies are definitely pollinators. They nectar on flowers. They, they fly from flower to flower. They're not picky, necessarily. They'll, they'll go to all different kinds of flowers as well, not just one species of flower. So with being able to fly, they have the mobility, they can really help serve as pollinators. Caterpillars are, these guys especially, are just really on the ground, crawling around from plant to plant. They would not serve as pollinators because they're out consuming the plants. But what we are pretty sure, um, especially when I get to watch how much they eat and how much they poop, uh, I am sure they're great at recycling plant material and providing some fertilizer and compost for, for the plants that are around them. Did I already mention the two types of butterflies we have? Can anyone figure them out from these two posters? Our primary mission is to educate and inform people about conservation and wildlife issues so that they can take actions to preserve wildlife. Right. Uh, and we have 1.6 million visitors a year, so we have a huge audience that we can tell that story to. We don't have these butterflies on exhibit, so, um, so that's a problem, getting the message out. So what we try and do is, uh, we have um, uh, three or 400 uh, kids come to camp every week throughout the summer, so we try and get as many of those camps to come through our butterfly lab and actually talk to the people who are raising the butterflies as possible. Uh, we involve interns in those projects. We have Ford and Silver Spot and Taylor's Checker Spot. So we have both of these in the lab right now. These guys at the coast, where they're from, there's tons of uh, flowers out there that they can pollinate in their coastal meadows. Um, the checker spots um, have many different host plants. So there's many plants that they can eat and they can eat the nectar from when they're adults. So one of those important flowers is the Indian paintbrush, which is really difficult to cultivate, but it's also really common in Oregon and Washington. So um, they, drink the nectar from that flower a ton. When we have adults here in the lab, they eat the nectar from all sorts of flowers that we pull off of zoo grounds. Even though these butterflies or caterpillars are specific to sites on the coast, um, there, there are butterflies all around us. And so there's wonderful things that people can do in their own backyard or on their patio or on their porch. And that would be to provide nectar plants for butterflies and host plants for the caterpillars. Each cat kind of caterpillar needs specific leaves that it can eat, and that's called a host plant. And then the most important thing is not to use pesticides. Mary Jo Anderson, thank you so much for meeting with us and the work that you do to make such a difference. Thank you so much for coming to the zoo today. This is Jacob Anderson Minchel bringing you the tools to be sustainable today.